Hey Tana, this is Tiffany Bender from Munchkins and Mohawks Photography with your first week of critique at Chic Critique. Um, I really enjoyed looking at your images this week um, and I am excited to get to know you. Um, so I let's start here first with our settings on our first image. Um, we uh, are have, we have 10 minutes to work here so um, I see that you uploaded four. I, I'm going to give you a critique on the first three um, simply because I don't want to um, just skim over them. So I want to get some good detail for you um, on what you can improve on. So know that for next week that three would probably be the best um, image. Three is the, is the gold number to upload for a critique. Okay, so I actually really, really love your images. I don't have a lot um, of things to say, but I've got a couple of really great pointers for you and things that I think you can work on, but you've got a really, really great start. So the first image here, we've got uh, your D700 with your 50 millimeter. Um, your ISO is at 640 shot at f 2.0 and 1 over 500. Your lighting is great. We've got some beautiful shadowing here. So we've got the light kind of falling right on the baby. You've got some nice pleasing shadows under the nose, um, some nice shadowing under here. I'm very happy with your um, lighting overall. So I went ahead and pulled this into Photoshop. There are a couple things that um, I think you can improve upon. Um, so let's take a look at those. All right, so you did mention um, first a little bit about the posing, and you are correct. I always love to kind of put baby's hand right underneath their face, so that way it kind of props up their face, you can see it better, and kind of straighten those little fingers out as much as you can. Um, sometimes I actually hold them there for a couple seconds before letting go, um, because they will tend to kind of curl back up. So kind of hold them there. Um, and even if you need to have mom kind of hold the fingers there and kind of get them under, wiggle them underneath their, their face and then lay them right on top. I really like to see all those little fingers and toes. Same thing down here. So I either like to see like the, um, the uh, knee touching the elbow. So you kind of like tuck the little elbow in. So the hand would be kind of falling back here further, be closer to the body and the little feet. I either like to see the feet kind of hanging out here or sometimes I'll even take the foot and kind of tuck it up under here and have the little toes peeking out up here. I love to see all the fingers and toes. Um, it just, it, it really just um, makes the image look a little bit more polished. Overall though, you really did a great job on posing. It's great that you captured that sweet little smile. Your color looks really good. Um, let's take a look here. Um, if you go to the window and you hit the info button, you can kind of see you've got your uh, cyan magenta in yellow. So I'm always looking for my cyan, less than my magenta, less than my yellow, and you're spot on with all of those. So we look good. I'm kind of rolling my uh, mouse over that, looking really, really good. Um, the one thing that I think I would work on would be the crop. So if you look here, um, <clears throat> let me see if I can do a crop layer. Let's see. Um, okay, I'll just have to show you with my brush here. So I like to see my subjects in the top third. She's kind of falling a little bit close to the middle. Excuse me here, one second. So if we could look at this, this is kind of ghetto, really sorry about that. Um, so she's kind of falling up like the inside box here. So we would have her head a little bit more up here. So what you could do in, that's really fancy, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> um, what you could do would be to duplicate the layer and you can kind of um, add some canvas. So you could either reduce the size of the image and kind of bring her up here a little bit. I feel like if you would have taken one step back or even if you have a little bit of room in the camera, you want her head kind of falling over here a little bit. And so what I did is I duplicated the layer, I moved it around a little bit. And a little trick I do is I make a layer mask and I've got the white mask here which reveals the image and I'm going to um, grab a, a brush and I'm gonna hit that on black over here so that's going to um, conceal my brush at 30% flow and I'm gonna blend these two in together here so I kind of just did that so if you didn't have any room in camera to kind of um, back up a little bit this would kind of do the trick for you of course I'm doing that really quick but you can kind of see here um, so that blends in pretty nice you can't really tell there's the before and there's the after I kind of moved her over a little bit 
give you a little bit more room around her. Um, Again, I'm going to reiterate this a lot because I think um, oftentimes you're drawn to an image and you don't necessarily know why. Um, and there are some things that really, you know, your eye uh, is naturally uh, flow. So we're going to try to bring our eye. Oopsie daisy. <laughs> Sorry about that. Let me flatten that. Bring our eye. Whoopsie. And lands right there. But great image. Great lighting. I love that you captured that little smile. Great job. All right, so let's look at our next image. I love to shoot just like this. The interaction here is perfect. I love how you've captured the light falling on her face. You've positioned them just perfectly um, as far as the lighting goes. So let's take a look a little bit at the composition. There are a few things I feel like you could improve on. Um, your settings are appropriate at um, ISO 640 f 2.5 and 1 over 800 so the shutter speed is fast enough and the ISO is high enough that you're blowing um, out the windows actually you could have probably uh, reduced the shutter speed a little bit um, and reduced your ISO a little bit but it your exposure is good so you, you it worked out okay all right so what I would do um, what I'm noticing first is mom's shoulder so I feel like this with a little bit of work and coaching and posing, um, we could have opened this up a little bit nicer to allow you to like invite you in to this interaction here. So I would have liked you to ask mom to kind of drop her arm, drop her shoulder down, almost leaning into the camera and kind of scooping underneath the baby. Um, and this line here, so I'm feeling like it's a little bit broken because we've got her elbow cut off. So I'm going to encourage you girls to kind of take one step back and get the full scene in. And then if you feel like you need to crop in a little bit, you've got the ability to do that. And perhaps you do have some room in the camera um, as uh, or in the original um, image as well. Okay, so um, what you could do, and what I would have probably done if I would have shot it like this, I would have probably, I'm going to hop over into the liquify tool. Um, so I'm going to command J it, which is to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to go into liquify. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really large brush, and I am going to kind of push mom's shoulder. Oopsie, excuse me. I'm going to use the push tool, which is at the very top. It's called the forward warp tool. It's the little finger. So I'm going to kind of, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let me make sure I select that. There we go. That would be helpful. And I'm going to kind of push mom in because I'm guessing from the, this angle that mom is looking heavier than she actually was. So sometimes I do this to correct posture, you know, kind of push their shoulder down. It makes them look more relaxed because oftentimes um, new moms especially, they're nursing, um, their bodies have been through somewhat of a trauma. So their shoulders are kind of tense. Um, they, they're sitting in this this posture a lot so their natural um, posture right now is kind of got the the raised shoulders and we want to make her feel a little bit more relaxed by kind of pushing her shoulder down okay so you can see how that's a little bit more soft so you can this is more of the focus rather than kind of coming right into her shoulder so I'm gonna hit OK and you can see how that changes the feel from that to this Okay. Um, now, I don't have Lightroom on here, but what I would do, um, assuming that you did shoot this in RAW, so you can pull this into ACR or into Lightroom, um, what you can do is take the adjustment brush and up the exposure. If you wanted, if you were looking for more of that blown out background without the lines from the sliding glass door there, what you could do is just um, increase that exposure and kind of brush it on. Um, I guess I could kind of fudge it and fade in, um, uh, let's see here, in Photoshop. So what I did is I raised it in levels, and I'm going to go back, and I created a layer here. I inverted it, and then I'm just going to go back on and kind of paint that, those lines out. And it does work much better when you've got the raw file, because you're actually working... Um, instead of like destroying the pixels, you're actually manipulating the original image. So that would definitely be my preference is to pop that into Lightroom and kind of brush this out with the exposure brush. But um, just for sake of um, giving you an example here, this is what it would look like, something of that sort. 
And I would get in here real nice um, and zoom in really close and make sure I've got all of my areas. And then you will be able to see this line where we kind of pushed mom in. Um, and what I also do sometimes is I will duplicate the layer. I will grab the eyedropper, um, a brush on a low percent, a low flow, which is like around 30%. And I will kind of just brush back over this if I've missed any areas in Lightroom to kind of give it that beautiful clean look. So the focus is completely on the interaction of mom and baby. And now, of course, if you're looking to keep a little bit, I kind of like how you did have the background. The The lines from the slider were a bit distracting, but I did love the little drops on the, on the um, windows. So you can kind of see here, this is a completely different look. So here's our, whoopsie do. Here's our before. We've got our before here and our after here. Let's see if I can, here's our after and our before. So we completely transformed the image. Okay, our next um, image we're gonna look at is this beautiful woman and her Great Dane. This is just such a stunning image. This woman looks absolutely gorgeous. I love um, what she has selected to wear against the background here. It really makes her stand out. Um, and again, you've got really great connection. Um, I think you're really gonna be um, headed somewhere. You've got a really great eye. So some of the things that I would um, look at in this image, let's go ahead and hop over into Photoshop. Um, I think the first thing I would try, um, or if I were to shoot this, I would have um, kind of come in at a different angle. So we've got these trees over here and they're kind of competing for my attention. So uh, if you look at any of my work, I really like to use environmental framing um, to highlight my subjects. It really draws attention to them and um, creates a story and it really makes your eyes linger in the image. Um, and I'm kind of feeling like I've got this great interaction, you've got great posing and it's your eyes really um, circling around here, but then I'm also being drawn out here. So I've got these trees that are competing for my attention. So what you could have done is if you would have taken about five steps to the right, camera right, and shot in at this angle. So I don't know, I don't know how these trees continue, but hopefully they kind of come over and the branches would fall over top of her. Um, and that would create some beautiful framing over top of her um, and her, her pet and kind of just draw you in. So we would be shooting in from this angle here. Can you see that? Shooting in from this angle instead of straight on here. But I love how you've got her position. So we've got this complete circle here that your eye just keeps um, lingering. Okay, let's check out our settings. The settings look appropriate, so I imagine they're going to be good here. Let's see. Um, all right, so we've got our ISO at 200, which is great because we're outside and we want to keep that as low as we possibly can. Your 85 millimeter was a great lens to select to shoot that, so we've got lots of room. And the longer the lens, the creamier the bokeh on the background, so that was a nice um, lens choice because after all, this is going to be our focus of the image. We're not um, shooting a landscape image where we want to see every leaf on the tree. We really want all this to kind of fall off and be buttery and beautiful and kind of have that watercolor feel, which I think you've achieved. Um, we've got f2.2. Great. We've got a, you know, shooting that really shallow and making our subject the, the focus of the image and your shutter speed is at, at uh, 1 over 400. I'm sorry, 1 over 800. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong settings here. <laughs> okay, scratch that. Um, we've got ISO 400, <laughs> um, which you could have probably gone down to 200, but you're you're at the, with the D700 um, at that ISO. Of course, you're not going to get any noise introduced. Um, and one over 8,000 um, to achieve that f 2.0. Um, that is probably where you needed to be to get proper exposure. Um, Okay, let's see here. Is there anything specific? I don't think there was anything specific you were asking. Oh, I love the, the processing, of course. It's the Crabapple preset from our Lightroom collection, um, Bliss. No, that was from Splendor, so I'm glad that you like that. Thank you. 
Um, so I'm looking forward to your images next week greatly. Um, I think you have a great eye. Um, there are just a few things that I want you to pay attention to next week. So let's look at our backgrounds and make sure our um, we are uh, looking for environmental framing. Um, let's, so let's watch the direction we're going to be shooting. Continue to get this great interaction um, and have that line to, to, to circle uh, and keep our eye focused on our subjects. Um, and that's it. I think you're doing a really great job, and I'm excited to see what you have next week. So I will see you next week. Thank you so much.